Here we look very quickly at how metal atoms are bounding together, making pure metals. Well, just one of simple example is sodium metal. Metals can have very different properties. They can be soft, they can be hard. Uh, usually they have lustrous surface uh, when they are not covered with metal oxide. And very important property is electric conductivity of metals. So what makes a metal metal? How metal atoms are bound together in solid states? First, uh, metals can exist as metals only in solid. We, we do not have. Uh, uh, of course, you can have a liquid metal, still being metallic, uh, but in gas you need molecules and this will be not a metal. So what happens uh, inside uh, sodium? We can see this uh, drawing is not in scale, that deeply you have 1s and 2s and 2p levels completely occupied in inner shells. Now, the only orbitals that are in outer shell of sodium are 3s and 3p. 3p orbitals are empty. 3s orbitals have one electron per each atom of sodium. These 3s make enormous number of molecular orbitals, as many of them as you have atoms in a chunk of metal, because usually you have enormous number. We are talking about billions of billions of billions of orbitals. They are so close to each other, we can say they are making a band. Half of this 3s band is occupied, another is empty because we do not have enough electrons. So electrons can easily travel from one atom to another. They are not located at atoms, and this is why conductivity occurs. Uh, we can look at this in more detail. Say, let's consider a lithium-2 molecule. This molecule exists. We take 2s orbital and 2s orbital of lithium and make a bonding orbital, sigma 2s, with two electrons sitting on it. It's diamagnetic, it's paired electron, it has nothing to do with metals. Now, you can arrange four atoms of lithium overlapping each other, making something like tetrahedral environment, and you'll have two bonding orbitals and two antibonding orbitals. Uh, two bonding will be occupied. Now, if you have a large number, uh, the gap between bonding and antibonding becoming smaller, smaller and smaller, and eventually comes to zero. As a result, you have one large band of orbitals, and it is occupied by one half. So, to jump to next position, you need to apply infinitively small energy, and that's why this electron moves so easily. Let's look at beryllium. Beryllium does not make beryllium-2. It doesn't make beryllium-4, but 
you can have a band of bonding and antibonding orbitals made of 2s atomic orbitals. Now you'll have exactly the same made of 2p because there are so many of them sum of 2p bonding electrons will be lower than highest sigma antibonding. That's why electrons will jump from here to there and it will be some empty space on this orbital. As a result, we will have conductivity because electrons can jump in slightly higher orbitals here or there and go through the space. If there is a large band gap between one group of orbitals and another, one band and another, electrons cannot jump here and we have insulator. There is no electric conductivity. If we have two separate bands, one of them is completely occupied, another is completely empty, but the distance is very small. Uh, some random electrons can jump on upper band, crossing the gap, and you'll have small but detectable conductivity. That's what we name intrinsic semiconductor. In reality, metals are not single crystals. They are arrangement of multiple domains, multiple crystals that make a solid of very complex nature. These are two microstructure photos of different metals, rather beautiful, I would say, showing that uh, mechanical structure is very complex. Next, when you mix two elements, they can make metal with its own properties, very commonly used and very famous is copper zinc alloy, brass, that has crystal structure that is different from copper or from zinc structure. Atomic properties are different, sizes of atoms are slightly different, so the arrangement is far more complex. There are literally millions of alloys known, and this is fantastic area of metallurgy. Again, atoms in mixed alloys have very different properties than atoms in uh, pure metals. Just some microphotographs of alloys. You can see that perhaps composition here is different with different crystals. Uh, sometimes properties of metals in alloys are so different that you have essentially ionic compounds. For example, if you have sodium tellium alloy, tellium make negative ions and sodium makes positive ions, still keeping all the structure or more like metallic than ionic. So the fact that a compound is made of two or more metals does not mean uh, that they are with the same zero charge. They can be negative and positive inside. 